All right, we're back in the front bedroom here. And I used pretty much the last of my little vapor roll barrier here. Vapor barrier roll, something like that. And so we're getting ready to put one piece of drywall in here. I think it ends right at this window. I did run the wire just from the thermostat down to where the in wall here will be right here. Cut that out. I still need to drill a hole in the top plates there and run the power cord or power line to the, the thermostat here, but that'll come from the ceiling. It'll be its own circuit. Uh, so we'll worry about that later because I'm just doing the four foot section or four foot tall section here for now, but we'll roll that on in here and screw it on. All right, so here we go. Just throwing in this drywall here. And it was almost eight feet long to where it hit a two by four there, but not quite. So we just cut it off to the closest one and then it fit fairly well. I think on the first uh, indoor heater or in wall heater in my master bedroom, I think I cut the drywall hole in afterwards, but we decided to cut it before and on that one. And then here we're in where the toilet is going to be in that front bedroom and just had to measure off where those two by fours were once I put that on there and got it in there pretty well. And then this is back in the very front end of that front bedroom slash office. And that's the front window there that I have that black plastic on so people can't watch what I'm always doing. And then here uh, we messed up a little bit. Boom. <laughs> yeah, that blew, but you know, it'll give me a chance to learn how to fix, uh, broken drywall so we'll take it as a learning experiment or experience one or the other or both and then this is the little closet in that front bedroom uh, it's really deep so it's not really a closet but i mean technically it is to be considered a bedroom but it's pretty funky back there and then the front right corner here just getting all the drywall roughed in there baby had to come supervise so yeah it feels good to be getting these in there it really brightens up the room once you get these walls in and i can't wait to get the ceiling panels in they're not going to be drywall because technically i could put drywall up there but i'm using paneling because it's lighter and will hide some of the imperfections but anyway we'll give you a little breakdown of what i've done so far here coming up All right, so we got most of the drywall done in this front room here. So let me do all this. And we don't have this sheet up because A, I need to run a main line down wire here. And mainly because I need to also run the water pipes up through the floor and then hook up the main shower valve. So that'll be a while. And then once I get this drywall up, then I can put a piece that bumps into it over there. So we'll just leave that open as well. And we did this section a while back, excuse me. And I haven't done this last piece yet because we need to run a mainline electrical into this box here for the wall heater. It's gonna be its own circuit. So we're gonna pull some wire from the front are actually back I suppose and we've started that so yeah so I got a new uh, spool of wire here and we'll just bring it up through the ceiling and through here it's kind of just on this side of the insulation for now I just don't feel like pulling the insulation all down yet so we'll just run it to where there's like a ridge beam in the middle, or I guess not really a ridge beam, but beam in the middle that I'll tack the wire to as we pull it through and bring it on down. And yeah, so I'm just showing you pretty much running one uh, power cord coming through the ceiling, but I think I pulled about five or six cords uh, in this little session here. Um, not, too, not too bad. And this is, I think, I was thinking this is the farthest one up, but I had, I had, Two other ones coming into this bedroom and one's going to go to the very front end of the house for some outdoor lights but 
We'll work on that at another time. And here just tacking in the cord for the space heater up front so I can finally put that last piece of drywall. And then we'll be moving on into the metal, middle bedroom, but we'll explain that here. So we are get to play a nice game of Tetris here with the drywall because we have it all, you know, brought in through the front door. I had it stacked here for a while and then we moved it back here. But I need to do some more drywalling in the bedroom. And I'd like to have eight foot sheets in here, but the ceiling isn't eight feet. So I can't just stack them up tall, you know, eight feet by four feet and just bend them around this corner. Which that might even, yeah, four foot would work. But eight feet definitely can't go around this corner or come in here. But luckily, I hadn't put the drywall in this part of the room here on the uh, closet. So I had to move some boxes and lift up the sheet. And it barely made it through there. And, and so we were pulling them in. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... I don't know, about eight or ten sheets of eight footers. So we'll we'll start dragging them through here. I have to lift them up over these boxes. And I mean, I suppose I can move these boxes out of here to get them in here a little bit easier. But then again, I, I have to get them a little bit higher than the base of this one because they don't want to, there's not enough room to come around this corner. But if I go higher up, there's a little bit more flexibility. So yeah. Pulling them in this way. Good times. Especially when it's like 85 degrees in here. Or 90 degrees outside. You know, I can turn on my AC and cool it down. But Alright, so yeah. Getting getting all these pieces yeah, through into that bedroom was, was not fun. But I was happy to get them through there in 8 foot sections. And not have to cut them in half. Uh, and then have more seams to have to use uh, drywall tape on and mud to to finish them out so it was nice to have you know as long as i could get in there with the eight foot sections and sometimes i measure and cut out you know sections for the windows like this one right here but for some reason i decided to just mark it off while i was in place and sometimes it's easier sometimes it's harder i don't know you know i do one way if I like it, I'll re replicate it. If I don't, I'll try another way. And uh, I think uh, measuring and cutting out before I put them up uh, turned out to be the, the better way to do it, which is what I did with that one, obviously. Um, but then again, I didn't have any um, outlets to cut on that one, so it was a little bit easier and straightforward to put up there. So I appreciate those ones, not having to figure out where the little outlet boxes are. And then just two little pieces on the end there. And I think I just ran out of drywall pieces. So instead, I, or I would have had like, you know, an eight or seven and a half or eight foot, seven foot, eight inches or however tall the ceiling is. So I wouldn't have that middle seam, but is what it is. And then here I'm just uh, putting some lag bolts in this wall here to go through the bottom plate and the subfloor into the framing of the house for lateral stability and then here just putting in some braces for the door jam to bite into which I'll explain here in a minute and just adjusting a, a mesh measure on an outlet box there on that one but we got it all figured out and put in and you can see that I put some rock wool on that wall and got it all insulated but we'll give you a, a little breakdown of what I'd got done so far on this section. Okay, so we got a significant portion of this entrance wall done. Still got to put some insulation here, obviously, for sound deadening. I put these three little brackets here um, for the door jam so I can nail them into something because it's going to be straight here. You know, the other door jam's going to start here, but this wall you know goes here and doesn't end there so just gonna have it some give it something to bite into instead of just being uh off the drywall so anyway uh we got these two eight foot sheets up and what we're doing here i just finished doing some electrical on this wall the all this 
stuff was piled up here, so it was in the way and I had to move it. Uh, this is my flooring. I don't know if I've shown it. I mean, I may have. But anyway, it's uh, acacia wood. It's pretty good. Uh, hardwoods. And uh, kind of has a weird smell to it, but I'm hoping that's just the bottom and not the top because it kind of has a chemical smell to it. So hopefully when it's down, it, it won't be stinky. But yeah, I got all this. Hopefully it's enough to uh, cover the whole house minus the bathrooms. Um, I think I paid 750 bucks for it, which is a steal because it's probably, shoot, 3000 plus retail is my guess. But somebody put it in. They didn't like how it scratched up from their dogs. I don't know. Or they just didn't like it. I don't know. And so they got something new and tore this out. And I picked it up for a good price. So anyway, back to what we got going on. So I moved it out of the way. And then I put this, these little braces behind this 2 by 4 So when I put the drywall up here, this piece of drywall is something to bite into. And I started in here also is the main power coming into this wall and this is going to be like a nightstand outlet and then that outlet goes to the living room area comes over to another one for the living room area and this is for like the tv on the living room area comes back around and the second uh, bed stand outlet in this little bedroom and then it goes through here there's another outlet on the other side of the wall out there in the corner for router and modem and there's an outlet here and here and so that's what gets powered off of this one circuit so anyway i will put this bat of rock wool in these walls for sound deadening so when someone's in here don't have to worry as much about someone watching the tv out in that room so hopefully that'll help i just have enough i think to cover this wall and maybe this section um, and then I'll probably just use, I'll either buy another, um, package of the rock wool to finish off this and these two sections, or, um, I'll just use the styrofoam, uh, big pile of styrofoam, uh, panels I have out in my shed and just st stuff a couple inches of styrofoam in there. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes, but now we'll just put the rock wool up and then I'll show you putting the drywall up in at least this wall so here we go all right there it is got all the rock wool in this wall and i'll hide this back end and that back end of the outlet there was one there just put a little piece just for a little bit more sound deadening and then that was all that was one packet of rock wool and then I just had some cut off ends because each one is about you know somewhere around four feet tall so this is just shy of eight feet so I had to cut off a little chunk on you know the second one and I was able to stack enough up from those two packs to almost get to the top of this wall and then I just put like little pieces behind these two by fours I do have some standard fiberglass r13 that I'll probably put on this I just have like a random roll and so I'll put all that here. If there's enough to fill up this gap, I'll fill up that gap with it so that I can cover that wall up there with some sheetrock. And then, like I said, then I'll probably use styrofoam on these other walls as a sound deadener and get them covered up. But for now, we'll just work on this one. And yep, you can see I did the rock wall on that wall as well. Uh, just didn't record it. It's, it's a little small in this bedroom, and so it just was easier to get it done and and uh without having to move things around but we got this one mostly done and we'll give you another little breakdown until i get it finished all right so i did find the little uh, fiberglass style insulation piece uh, that i had and so i just cut in i did had just enough to pretty much get this section covered up um yeah, so, and I did have to put one more little cross brace up here for when I uh, frame in the top here for, you know, the door doesn't go all the way to the ceiling. So I have to put a little frame up there and just give it something to bite into up there. So we got four little cross braces to work with over there after I cut some pieces of uh, drywall and put them in here. So we'll get this 
wall all finished with the rough end drywall anyway. And yep, so just finishing up the outer walls or, you know, inner walls on this bedroom, but not, you know, the closet section still needs to get done. But feels good to get it all enclosed and we'll talk about the closet here. All right, so we got that back wall done, this little guy, little wall here done, and we're about ready to close in the closet here with drywall, at least most of it. I had to move all this stuff out of here, stack the uh, flooring over a little bit farther so I could uh, get some access here. And, you know, I ran out of rock wool, but I have a ton of this styrofoam uh, boards, so I just cut some pieces in there. You know, it's not the prettiest stuff, and... You know, not airtight, but we're just trying to cut down some volume from the living rooms or if people are in here, whatever. Um, I had to put these, you know, cut some little one by four runners here so that the drywall has something to bite in on this side because you only have on this side already. I had both sides here and then I almost forgot the drywall that's on the back side of this wall. It ends like right here and almost missed having to put one of these type of runners in here so before i close it up but we got that done so yeah so now we'll put the drywall here at least on the inside not on this side yet until i run the wire up for this light switch all right here we go and now that the closet is empty it was easier to get these pieces around the corner plus the drywall stack was much shorter and those pieces are less than eight and i was going to do the inside closet but i decided to do the outer section um, for here anyway so this is about where we're at with this video so i appreciate you all sticking through with my adventure here and then we'll leave you off with a little bit of cali telling me how she feels when i'm not giving her attention when she feels that she needs it so take care y'all